Hello, I'm Anna Mackay, and this video is on powers of powers. A reminder for my students, make sure you're writing down everything that you see on the screen, both handwritten and typed. So writing all of this and the box down. So when raising a number in index form to a power, you keep the base and multiply the indices or multiply the powers. So that looks like if we have a to the power of something here, b, and all of that is multiplied by c, another index, that's the same as you keep that base and you multiply those two powers together. Let's put that into practice. So we're asked to simplify. Now simplify does not mean calculate. So we're just going to use the rule that we've learned to make this simpler. The rule is over here. So see how the 3 to the power of 2 all to the power of 4 is in a similar format to this one. So that is telling us here with B and C we multiply them together. That's the rule. So in this example we're going to multiply the two powers together. So let's write that equals 3 to the power of 2 times by 4. And then we need to work that out. 2 times by 4 is 8. And that's all that we need to do. We don't need to work out 3 to the power of 8. We just simplified it. Same process here. Using the rule, same base, multiply the powers. So we're going to take 5 to the power of 3 times by 4. And then we work out that multiplication. 3 times by 4 is 12. So we leave it as 5 to the power of 12. No need to get your calculator out. Moving on, writing all of this down. Raising a product to a power. Product is often a word used when we're talking about multiplication. So here there's a product in that, brackets, in that bracket and it's being raised to a power. And see what's happening. That C, that power, is being distributed to each of the other bases. So it's a to the power of c times by b to the power of c. A similar thing here when we are raising a quotient to a power. Quotient in the language of maths is referring to when we're doing a division. Having a look here, when that's all raised to a power, it's equivalent to each of those two components, the a and the b, raised to the power of c. Let's do an example ourselves. Writing out, example, expand the brackets and then write this out and let's work it out. So we will put that equal to where we see that 3, we need to put that power of 3 with each of the numbers. So the brackets disappear now and we have 4 to the power of 3 multiplied by 5 to the power of 3. Next one, if you think you know what to do, pause the video, give it a go and then come back and check. I'll assume you've done that. So the answer for this one is we have to put that power of 3 with each of the two numbers. So we'll, the brackets disappear and we now have 4 to the power of 3 on 7 to the power of 3. And that's all we need to do. Next. This rule here is a really interesting one. Writing it all out. A number raised to the power of 0 equals 1. So that means any number a huge number, a small number, a negative number, even a letter in this case, raised to the power of zero is one. Let's do some examples. This time around we're going to calculate, so we really have to work it all out. Now you're going to have to use the rules that we've been working on. When you see a division like this, same base, base of nine, they're being divided. Divide is um, another way of thinking of well, the rule that you'll use is a subtract, and the subtract sign looks a little bit like that divide symbol. That might be a way of remembering it. So this is the equivalent of 9 to the power of 2 take 2. That's the rule. 2 take 2 gives us 0. Now, anything to the power of 0 is 1. And that's our answer. Part B. This great big number in here, we don't need to work it out first. 3 squared would be 9 times by 5 to the power of 
four, oh, big number, you don't need to do it because it's all raised to the power of zero. So the answer for that is just one. Part C, that number there, seven divided by 11 to the power of zero, the answer will just be one. This one though, there will be a step of working out. We're having negative seven times by negative three to the power of zero. So that negative seven stays the same. Now working out negative three to the power of zero. Any number to the power of zero is one. Don't be confused. Oops, my iPad just dropped out. I'll just sync it back up. So we had negative seven times by one. And I was just saying that don't think that because there's a negative there with the three that you need to write negative one. No, any number to the power of zero is one. Even if it's a negative number, the answer is still one. So our final answer for that is negative seven. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And that is the last video in the integers and indices series. Thank you.